Not all mafia families have an official boss in 2002. Some families have had acting bosses or street bosses in charge for decades. The Lucas and the Bruno family, for example, have had the same employers. In certain circumstances, the family's bosses in hierarchy are unknown since the genuine boss had just died, been slain, or retired. Who were the current mafia bosses in 2022 then? So here we are to tell you the truth about the current mafia bosses in 2022 and all 10 active families and bosses. Number 1. Michael the Nose Mancuso, the Bonanno family. For the past eight years, Michael the Nose Mancuso has been the official boss of the Bonanno family. He's the Bonanno's first official boss since Joe Massino became government witness in 2004. Mancuso's street boss and acting underboss is Joseph Jose Camarano Jr. Mancuso was chosen as the new official boss of the family in June 2013, while imprisoned for the next five years. In 2004, he was promoted to acting underboss. In the 1980s, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison after being convicted of manslaughter and the death of his wife, Evelina. He has been charged with several murders, including the 1999 murder of Bonanno Capto, Gerlando Ciasia. Big Joe Massino was the only one who linked Mancuso to the murder. Mancuso was convicted of another murder in 2008 and sentenced to 15 years in prison. Many more Bonanno members and associates were imprisoned after the FBI narcotics bust in 2017 and a major racketeering case in 2018. In 2022, he was arrested on March 9th but released on a bail of $500,000. Number 2. Andrew Andy Mush Russo, Colombo Family the Colombo crime family is the youngest of the five families that dominate organized crime activities in New York City within the criminal organization known as the American Mafia. The most violent mafia family in New York was recently forced to look for a new boss. Carmine the Snake Persico died in 2019, leaving the Colombo family without a boss for the first time since the 1970s. Some claim that Carmine appointed his son, Alphonse Alleyboy Persico, to the position, but this has not been confirmed and Alleyboy is currently serving a life sentence. What is known is that Andy Mush Russo was serving as the Columbo's family street boss. After his death on April 18, 2022, the position is still vacant. Russo was Carmine Persico's cousin, and he held the title of acting underboss since 1973 when Persico took over the family. Number 3. Lorenzo Lor Menino, Gambino Family Lor Menino is the new powerful acting boss of the Gambino family. He is around 62 years old and has been involved with the Gambino family since the Gotti Gravano era. Menino, in fact, worked as a hitman for Gotti. Frank Kelly was named acting boss when the official family boss, Dominico Italian Dom Cefalu, went into semi-retirement in 2015, and Lor Menino took over as the family's new underboss after Kelly was murdered in front of his home in 2019, and then became the acting boss. He was taking over a family that appears to be in transition. It's unclear whether Lore will be named the official boss or if they'll split up. Lore was part of a five-man hit team that assassinated Francesco Oliveri in 1988. Sammy Gravano, who testified against Lore and the others in 1993, was in charge of the hit's planning and execution. Menino was released in 2014 after serving 10 years. He served this sentence quietly and was quickly promoted to Capto upon his return to the streets. By this point, some of the fervor surrounding the Gotti era had subsided. This enabled Menino and his family to begin the slow process of rebuilding after nearly two decades of rapid Gambino family decline. Number 4. Laborio Barney Bolomo, Genovese Family Laborio Salvatore Bolomo is the Genovese crime family's boss in the United States. He was inducted into the Genovese family in 1977. Following the indictment of Vincent Gigante in the Widows case, Kenneth McCabe, then organized crime investigator for the United States Attorney's Office in Manhattan, identified Bolomo as the acting boss of the crime family in 1990. Blomo was charged with RICO, which included multiple murders, racketeering, and extortion in 1996. The murder charges were eventually dropped. Barney worked out a plea deal on the other charges and received a 10-year sentence, which was a huge success compared to the life sentence he could have received. He was released in 2004 but was soon caught up in another murder investigation. While serving his sentence, he was accused of ordering the 1998 murder of Ralph Coppola. Once again, he was able to beat the charge while only being convicted of mail fraud. The Genovese family may be doing better than any other mafia family in the country as a whole. They have a good number of active captains paying tribute, about 15. Bolomo was most likely been recognized as the official boss of the Genovese family since around 2016. Number 5. Victorio Vic Amuso, Lucchese family 
Since 1987, Vicamuso has been the Lucchese family's official boss. He is regarded as one of the most deadly mafia bosses in American history, and multiple informants claim that he still rules the family from behind bars. Vic and his former underboss, Anthony Gaspipe Casso, were involved in a dozen mafia murders. When you consider Amuso's original mentor, Crazy Joe Gallo, it's not surprising that he was violent. Vic and Gaspipe Castle were responsible for the 1986 car bombing that killed John Gotti's underboss, Frank DeChico. It was a form of retaliation after the death of Paul Castellano. They were both eventually caught up in the famous Windows case, and Castle became an informant. The Lucchese family as a whole is doing quite well. They have captains with crews of soldiers and associates spread across New York City and New Jersey. Number 6. Joseph Big Joe Todaro Jr. Magadino Family Big Joe Todaro Jr. is the boss of the Magadino crime family in Buffalo, New York. The family also possesses considerable power north of the border in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Big Joe's father, Joseph Todaro Sr., was the family's boss in the 1980s when the family was at its strongest. The Magadino family has been around for more than a century. When his father went into semi-retirement in 1995, Todaro Jr. took over as acting boss. He would be named official boss 11 years later in 2006. At the time, the family wielded enormous power over local labor unions. They have since lost most of that racket, but there are still many others, such as drug trafficking, loan sharking, and extortion of local businesses. There is no doubt that the Magadino family still exists. The question in recent years has been how much power they still hold. It's not the level it once was, but they evolved into a more semi-legitimate type of organization, similar to Todaro with Lenova. Todaro's nephew runs Pharaoh's Adult Entertainment Club, which was raided in December 2019. Number 7. Salvatore Salidi De Laurentiis Chicago Outfit when the previous boss, John Nonos de France, retired in 2014, Sally took over as the official boss. De France continued to provide family advice until his death in 2018 from Alzheimer's disease. De Laurentiis is a skilled mobster who has previously served as a mediator between rival outfit factions, earning him the respect that has propelled him to the top of the Chicago outfit. Sully is now in his early 80s, and while he hasn't retired, he has slowed down. The current outfit hierarchy is completed by underball Salvatore Sammy Cards Cataudella and acting advisor John Pudgy Matassa Jr. The outfit's current status has been a source of debate in recent years, with many questioning how influential they remain. Number 8. Joseph Skinny Joey Merlino Bruno Family For more than two decades, Joseph Skinny Joey Merlino has been the boss of the Bruno family in Philadelphia. His father was Chucky Merlino, the former Scarfo underboss. They took over in 1999 when his predecessor, Ralph Natale, became a government witness. Merlino was acquitted of three other murder charges in 2001, but was convicted of racketeering and spent the next decade in prison. He served his sentence quietly, but the FBI knew Merlino was still in charge in Philadelphia. When he was released in 2011, he moved to Boca Raton, Florida full-time. According to him, he was completely retired from all Mafia activities. In 2016, the Mafia made headlines once more when 46 mobsters were arrested in a massive RICO case. Merlino was one of the men, along with several known Genovese family members in New York. This demonstrates that families all over the country are still actively working together. Number 9. Carmen the Cheese Man D'Annunzio, Patriarca Family the Patriarca crime family, also known as the New England Mafia, the Boston Mafia, and the Providence Mafia, is an Italian-American mafia family in New England. The family was led by Carmen the Cheese Man D'Annunzio, a member of the Boston faction. The family is primarily active in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, and additional territory spread throughout New England. The enormous cheese man weighs somewhere around 400 pounds. He was a protege of longtime boss Luigi Baby Shacks Minocchio, who was imprisoned in 2011 and is now thought to be retired. Denunzio was imprisoned for bribery in 2009 and released in early 2015. When family boss Peter Lamone died in 2016, he became the new boss. The family is surviving because it has such a diverse membership and many of its members have invested heavily in more legitimate businesses. Their hierarchy appears to be stable after nearly a century, but they don't have any captains at the moment and need to fill the ranks. Number 10. Jackie the Kid Giacoloni, Detroit Partnership Family the Detroit Partnership is an organized crime family that has existed since the 1930s and continues to exist today. When longtime boss Giacomo Tocco died in 2014, Jackie the Kid Giacoloni took over. The partnership was no stranger to the kid's family and he grew up in the life. From a young age, he was groomed to be the boss. 
Jackie the Kid was born into a prosperous criminal family. The partnership is a smaller organization with about 40 to 50 members, but it is quite functional. They've done an excellent job of remaining low-key with only a few informers. They have a lot of investments into legitimate businesses in addition to extortion, loan sharking, and drug dealing. Do you guys think the mafia is still active these days? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe.